so uh, it was a great session all of all of you you know i had great fun in the last couple of uh, you know hours that i was here thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here to connect with you after so many so many years and i'm going to talk about the opportunities that are there for hybrid uh, work and learning i think almost all the speakers spoke about that so this is some interesting thing uh, recent survey says that 73% of the people of the of the global workforce they say that they want to you know work in a hybrid environment and whereas the 67% people who are very happy to you know uh, collaborate with people connect with people so it's kind of a paradox right so even today when i woke up and looked at the news i saw Google, uh, you know, Sundar Pichai, quoting that hybrid is here to stay, and all 80% of the managers, in fact, globally, they want the hybrid to stay, and that's the way life will be. Okay, so uh, I think all of us have gone through this, but some of the challenges that has come in our way. due to this hybrid work challenges are number one remote management so all the it uh, you know the it uh, it department guys they have been busy managing and deploying pcs and it's a, it's it's i i can assure you it's been difficult to remotely manage and remotely deploy pcs for different uh, you know uh, work streams second is cognitive overload most of the people say that while we are working from home people are calling in the odd hours of the morning and the odd hours at night so it's a cognitive overload of work there is no 9 to 5 so fundamentally what is happening is people are either looking for better options better career or their work life is like a little stressed uh, second is communication barrier it's so easy to talk face to face right it's so difficult to work and talk and communicate working in different time zones in different places work style flexibility i think everybody has a different function to do you need different flexibility of devices and finally data security so that's very very critical so so actually microsoft has worked on this in the last 2 years and has come up with a new solution to this i think all of you and most of you are aware of it it is the windows 11 so the windows 11 is basically the core of the windows 11 is actually windows 10 okay many people ask me is it upgradable is it possible is it the same what is the difference so windows 11 is nothing but the core of windows 10 with additional features and enhancements which can help you with your hybrid working let me put it in like that so this is powerful for your employees consistent for it and it has much much more security features small video so that i can explain everything in one minute sorry but this is okay Okay okay
okay so uh, some of the things that i want to highlight over here and many people have a lot of doubts on this is which window to use you know where to use how to use so just a small uh, clarity on this the product that we deal with is fundamentally coem and fpp so if you have a new pc okay if you have a new pc either it comes preloaded with windows right an hp or a dell or a lenovo or an acer it comes preloaded if it doesn't come preloaded kindly you can go for a coem which is basically nothing but a channel oem right and in case you want an fpp that works for both old pc as well as new pc for example if you are working with a customer who doesn't want to refresh his old pc he d he needs a new machine he needs a new machine but he doesn't have the fund to do that he just wants to refresh to a new uh, operating system go for fpp so that's the fundamental difference now windows 11 and windows 10 both are available in coem in fpp windows 10 is available 11 is available from april 1st so these are the changes uh, some more changes if it is the consumer if you are if you have a consumer who wants uh, windows so either he gets it in the form of a preloaded pc from hp dell lenovo or he is getting a pc which does not have a windows or any operating system and you can put either a coem or an fpp home so home is the version right if it is a commercial pc whether it is a small business or a large business or even an education while in education there is a scope of a home or a pro as per the requirement whether it's a small or a large business the basic thing either has to be preloaded or it has to be coem or fpp uh, pro i hope there is no doubt in that in case of any doubt in this uh, we can have offline conversations so uh, you know i have been always wondering that you know when people are selling devices uh, obviously with of operating system or a software um, is there an opportunity to attach something with it so the best solution i think is an office because more than 90% of the people in the country worldwide they are using office as one of the uh, uh, the products uh, for their application so office 2021 is the new office which is there kindly kindly don't lose the opportunity by selling just the device so this is the new launch just a minute so this is uh, office home and business 2021 it has better performance it has better accessibility features with better ui and also it has better security features too now which office you should sell that's the key question everybody has because microsoft is complicated and there are different ways of selling right just to give you a very clear view here so if we, if a person is looking for a perpetual license for lifetime right and it's a consumer customer you can pitch a home and student it's a commercial customer please pitch home and business this is the basic while there are more different types of offices for example standard professional will not go into that but this is the basic home and business is the basic perpetual if a customer is looking for a subscription model you have the personal and the family for the consumer and you have the business standard for the customer which is a commercial customer uh one interesting thing that i want to share with all of you you know while you have been buying a lot of this physical products in your hand and digital uh, is the new key we do have the esd products esd is nothing but the electronically software distribution in which you get the same product through your mail and it comes to you for office as well as windows fpp both of them and you do not need to keep inventory you do not need to have a place to keep the inventory it is available 24 into 7 from your distributor okay so the last part of it we know the products right now where do we buy them from are we giving the right product to our customers this is a very interesting thing so 
if you can see in the last two years during the pandemic, the cyber security threat in India has been never been so high. So it has grown more than 500%. So are we doing something about it? Or are we just saying that, oh, to hota rahega. right? Yes, you are smiling, I know. So one more thing is, in India and worldwide, we see threat as a service. This is also the biggest thing happening right now. Whether it's a mal malware, whether it's a ransomware, whether it's a cryptocurrency mining or a drive-by download, this is growing and impacting the business very, very heavily. People say that the, the people who are engaged in this kind of activities, what do they get from there? It's not only the money, it is more than that. From, and many people tell me that SMB has nothing to do with it. They do it in the government, government cases or they do it with large enterprises. Because what do you get there? Money, data, milega, but that's not the case. Hold on to see this. So, in the last year, 2021, three out of four SMBs had got this cyber, uh, you know, um, impact, cyber threat impact. So it were infected and they were impacted. And as Microsoft CTO says, there are two types of organizations. One, they know that they are hacked, and one, they don't know, but they are hacked. Right? So it is very, very critical that we get this information and this intelligence to each and every customer that we deal with. So, so this is the request that we have to all of you who are sitting over here. Like the opportunity of doing business with Microsoft is huge. The opportunity of earning is much more. But what is critical is to educate the customer who is buying from you. There are cases where possibly you even lose the cases because of somebody pitching the wrong product to the customer. So my strong urge to all of you, please kindly educate the customer, bring back the practices, take the examples of cases of banks and many people who have lost crores and crores of money in this cyber threats, okay? And you know, if required, involve us so that we can fight the case with you for you, and in any case you have any escalations, any feedbacks, please go to that site. This is the site, you get all information about uh, pirated products, non-genuine products, and everything that you want to know about piracy and genuine. Also, you can submit your, uh, you know, feedback or any information that you have in this. One more thing I keep on hearing from many people. Ke Microsoft to legal karna chhod diya. Microsoft to koi action hi nahi karta hai. So, I will say partly yes. So, fundamentally we believe that, you know, if you catch one, there will be five more. Right? So, it is better to actually try to get the problem and solve it. In the meantime, what are the things that we are doing apart from awareness, education? So while many of you do not know, we are doing something called a CAPOC. In CAPOC, what we do is we are keeping a list of the infringers in the online sales. And every month, every month, even though the number is huge, but every month we kind of delist and bring down people who are doing, uh, who are the infringers, who are the who are doing these rogue activities. With Amazon, along with the legal team, we have a tie-up where we do test purchases and anybody who is, who is selling non-genuine products over there is delisted by Amazon. And that is a legal agreement which Amazon has with us today. Okay. Sorry. That, that's what I'm saying, that we have a test purchase policy where every month we are purchasing and every month Amazon legal team, I can tell you 10 examples where we have done it and we are doing it and it has never stopped. The people have never stopped, so have we. That is exactly my point, that it cannot stop 
with one activity. It has to happen, all of them has to happen simultaneously. You have to carry on the messaging. I have to take the action. It cannot stop suddenly, right? So I will take the question because there are, we are standing between the lunch and the um, thing. So let's take it post the call. One more thing that we have done and many of the people, some people have got impacted actually. Uh, there's the DNA. So it's a very big action that we have taken actually when you are saying that is impacting us. Uh, we have done investigations and wherever we have found people selling pirated products, many of our bigger partners also, not taking anybody's name here, yeah, not taking anybody's name here, we have delisted them. Their MPN IDs or Microsoft partner IDs have been blacklisted and they have been stopped doing any business of Microsoft whether it's a volume license, whether it's a CSP business or anything for that matter. It's a very big step for Microsoft because many of our very big partners have been enrolled in that. Okay, so that's one. Uh, IT association engagement, this is one of them. Thank you so much, please spread the word. And finally, the genuine set that I've so shown you. So with that, I think I want to thank all of you uh, I'm looking forward to you. I have with me uh, Santosh. Santosh, can you please stand up here? Yeah, Santosh, I think most of you have met him. He's from the Ingram team. Ingram is a global distributor for Microsoft. We will urge you, please come back. Happy to hear all your problems and complaints and looking forward for solving them together. Okay, thank you.